I want to know how you guys determine the look of your vampires. I love the teeth and what you guys did to make them still look human but scary. So how did you determine what your vamps are going to look like? I think we started by looking at all of the references that we were raised on and then wanting to do something that felt like it was familiar but different enough that we could kind of own that, own that choice. Cool. And I think what we always were leaning towards was steering away from that kind of classic incisor, you know, romantic vampire notion and steering more into this sort of animalistic quality. 30 Days of Night vampires, I had to represent. It's Our my DP favorite. Aaron Morton shot 30 Days of Night as well. Yeah, he it's is like a true It's one of my all-time favorites. Genius. I love 30 it's Days of Night forever. It's so good. Movie. It's so. so scary. Yeah, that's why I love the teeth yeah. that you guys use. So, but that was, so that, was a, that was a huge reference for us. We loved the idea that the teeth felt like they had a real utility, that they were like actually for tearing people well, to pieces. It looked like there were two sets of teeth yeah, like yeah, yeah. growing on top of each other yeah. and some of them looked like deep sea fish at one yep. point. I was yep. like, ooh. That was a reference. They're yeah, all unique. Shark teeth. Yeah, yeah, they're all, and they're all different. Cool. Oh, that's all. So everyone has their own specific, has their own specific pair, teeth. Yeah. So what were your other references then? Some favorite vamps that you guys might have been pulling reference from besides obviously the beloved 30 Days of Night. <laughs> <laughs> in Near Dark, Lost Boys. Okay, the Near Til Dark. Dawn, Dawn. I won't say what, but there's a part where I was like, <laughs> There is a shot that is basic white glasses. I was like, he's here. Yeah. So yes, I was very excited. That photo was sent around on our text chain with uh, with Bill Paxson's in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> we resurrected him yeah. for the film. Um, pivoting from um, vampires, though, you all really good at picking uh, houses. For your set, or so was it a house? Was it a set? Was it both? Like, what was the situation with this giant house that y'all? A mix of both. The majority of the film, I mean, I'd say ninety percent of it was shot in a existing location. That it was totally empty when we found it. So set decked and designed like to the nines by our production designer and her and her art. Uh, art department. Um, Where is there a house like that? That's in, just like in Sydney. Ireland, Dublin. Yeah, it's an old. It's, of course, it's it, was, it used to. <laughs> so it was the um, the Guinness family's party house. They built it like just to like. <laughs> Who doesn't have a party house? <laughs> <laughs> and then it was sold off. It like became part of the church for a while, and it was an orphanage. So like fully fucking haunted. Oh, that's fully <laughs> Ireland. Then. Fully, was it an fully orphanage fully. owned by the Catholic <laughs> Church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the two big builds, there the library and the the uh, kitchen. kitchen and cellar were both were both set builds. The only two set builds. Oh, uh, that's so cool. So, you, was it haunted? Did you have ghostly experiences? It was spooky. I mean, without a yeah, doubt. Yeah, I didn't want to be spooky. in there with the lights yeah, off. Yeah, no. And um, what was it like cleaning up that house? To not get too spoilery, but there's quite a lot of. Oh. oh. Well, it was, that, was, that was a lot of work. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's some. Work. It's not just in the set builds. I feel like in the house, too, there are some yeah. moments. There was always a people with like spray. mop buckets just sort of standing. Uh, in the wings, like waiting for the scene to be over, waiting to rush. Lots in. of don't step here, don't step here, don't step here. <laughs>